This week in science, we're talking about the moon. It's hard to believe the last human to set foot there was Apollo 17 Commander Gene Cernan way back in 1972. We leave as we came, and God willing, as we shall return. With peace and hope. As historic as the Apollo missions were, they were also hugely expensive, and funding cuts forced NASA to scrap the program's final three flights. Fast forward half a century, and we're finally going back. NASA's Artemis missions are designed to pave the way for a sustained human presence at the moon. And yes, that does mean we're building a moon base. Over the next few years, NASA and its various commercial and international partners will establish a lunar orbital lab called Gateway, and a base camp on the surface near the moon's south pole. Step one is Artemis 1, an uncrewed mission set to take off later this year. NASA's most powerful rocket ever, dubbed the Space Launch System, will blast off from Florida, enter low Earth orbit, and separate from its crew module, Orion. The module will then set off for the moon, do a lap, and come back to Earth for re-entry. It's a dress rehearsal of sorts for Artemis 2, which will do a lot of the same stuff, only with four crew members on board. One of those astronauts will be a Canadian, who is destined to travel further from Earth than any other Canadian in history. Then comes Artemis 3, which will actually deliver people to the lunar surface and back, hopefully in 2025. It's not clear if Gateway will be ready to go by then, but the mission is designed to carry on without it. Two astronauts, including the first woman to ever walk on the moon, will spend about a week at the site of the future base camp, and hopefully come back with some water ice samples. After that, there are some question marks. Just like Apollo, the Artemis missions are incredibly expensive to operate, in part because most of the space launch system cannot be reused. But the Starship rocket from SpaceX is fully reusable, making it a whole lot cheaper to operate, assuming it ever gets off the ground. Whatever happens, the core idea remains the same. We take the lessons we learn from returning to the moon and apply them to future forays into deep space. In short, this is how we get to Mars. With This Week in Science, Curtis Doring, City News.